horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high or silver, the Lone Ranger. engineers who built the first railroad into the western United States faced many hardships and dangers, but they found one ally against outlaws, hostile Indians, and the forces of nature. The masked rider of the plains, with all his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, blazed the trail for progress and finally made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver... The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the railroad. There's going to be trouble. Hi, Silver. Hi. <laughs> the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode through the trees to the edge of the bluff and reined up to watch the railroad camp below them. The cars where the advance crew lived had been drawn up on a siding. It was mid-afternoon, and all the men were hard at work. They're making good progress, Tonto. Ah. This railroad will mean a lot to the state. The cattlemen won't have to drive their herds hundreds of miles to market and be able to get supplies quicker. The east and the west will be closer than they ever were before. That's right. One nation, indivisible. Them lay track plenty fast. Kearney knows his job. He has all the advance work done ahead of time. The men never have to want for ties or rails. They're always waiting for them. Oh, Tonto see that. Four miles, sometimes five miles of track a day. Kearney's a born leader. You look. What, Tonto? Two men come this way. Tonto no old man. Of course. That's Jeff Wilson, isn't it? Ah. And this railroad means the end of his freighting business. What would he be doing around the camp? Matt, his horse. Oh, wait a minute. I can see the young fellow's face now. That's Wilson's boy, Jim. I thought he was still going to school in the east. Them two plenty mad. Yes, Tonto. They do seem to be having an argument about something. There are some other men coming out of the camp. Maybe trouble, Kimasabi. You want Tonto to go down there, find out? I don't understand. Let me find out. All right, Tonto. I'll wait here for you. Get him up, Scout! Uh, no matter what you say, it ain't going to change my mind one little bit. You took this job without any leave from me. If you don't pack up your Dodge Pronto and come home, you're no son of mine. You hear that? I'm through with you for good. But, Paul... No but. Either you're coming or you ain't. Make up your mind about it. Well, what's going on here? Oh, nothing, Mr. Kearney. Nothing, this... eh? Ain't you got no gratitude for the way I brought you up, sent you to school? Well, it mean nothing to you that I slaved all my life to build up a business so I could turn it over to you? But that's just the point. Now that the railroad's here, you can't make any money freighting by wagon. Who says a railroad's here? Uh, your eyes ought to tell you that. Listen, you... Oh, uh... this, this is Mr. Kearney, the head engineer. Oh, Mr. Kearney, the head engineer. Well, Mr. Kearney, head engineer, let me tell you this. Freighters was plenty good for the folks that opened up this country. 
Nobody that ever depended on me for food and supplies was ever disappointed. I carried them through in spite of Indians and outlaws and blizzards and cloudbursts. I know you did, Mr. Wilson. No, no, don't you, Mr. Me. Oh, Jeff, then. I've heard about you, and I think you did some great work in the old days. But times have changed. Traders aren't fast enough nowadays. Why not? They get there when they're expected. That's all anybody can ask. You'll find out that you're wrong. You're just being stubborn, Paul. No. That's your last word to me, son? Jeff, why did you let your son go east and study to be an engineer if you didn't want him to use what he learned? Well, I didn't know he was learning to build railroads. He told me he was studying to be a surveyor. George Washington was a surveyor. And that suited me fine. There's plenty of surveying he can do without messing around with a railroad. Oh, you're just sore because the railroad means the end of the freighting business. Why don't you look at things straight? I'm looking at that... you straight, son. You coming home with me or not? No, I'm not a kid and you can't order me around. You mean it? I sure do. If you're going to stick to freighting, then it's up to me to earn money for the two of us. The railroad's here to stay and I'm staying with it. We'll see about that. You ain't won yet, Kearney. And let me tell you this. There's a lot of folks in this country feel the same way I do. We don't want the railroad. And we won't stop at nothing to keep you from getting it built. Paul, you don't know what you're saying. Plain English and gospel truth. We'll fight you to the last. Get up there, Blackie. Get up. Jeff couldn't have met it, Tonto. Maybe not. But all men who work in railroad think a mean it. He's an honest man. He wouldn't destroy property or endanger anyone's life. Oh, him plenty mad. He spoke without thinking. But now, if anything happens to delay the work on the railroad, Jeff will be blamed. That's right. It looks as if there'll be work for us around here, Kimosabe. Ah. Uh, I'm not afraid of Jeff. Oh, Tonto not afraid either. But there are other men who might like to delay the railroad who aren't honest. Ah. Uh. Jeff's given them an opportunity to get away with it. Uh, who you mean? Well, Kearney's had trouble with one of the engineers, a man named Warner. He was in that crowd around Jeff. What him look like? He's dark. He has a scar on his forehead. He was carrying a quirt this afternoon. You want Hunter watch him? And there's no need for it as long as he's working. But if he leaves the camp and heads back for Carlton, we'll follow him. Carlton, plenty bad place now. It's like all boom towns, filled with gamblers and gunmen, men who'll stop at nothing to get money. Ah. Uh-huh. We've had our warning, though, Tonto. We'll be on guard. Let's travel. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Dan. Howdy, Warner. What brings you into Carlton? Something happened at the camp today. You have another row with Kearney? Yeah, nothing like that. An old man named Jeff Wilson that runs a freighting company got sore. He told Kearney he was going to wreck the railroad. Well, thanks for the tip. Maybe he can use some help or look him up. No, you won't. <laughs> Sounds like a job me and the boys could handle. He didn't mean it. He was sore. Well, too bad. But it's a chance I've been waiting for. I'm ready to do business with you, Dan. Yeah? How many men have you got in town? Oh, half a dozen. There's more camped out of ways. I know you can round up plenty. What I'm asking is this. Slow down the crew to a mile a day. You sure that's enough? It's enough to get Kearney fired. And with him out of the way, I'll step up. Congratulations. What do I get out of it? You'll go into business, Dan. Business? You'll get the contract to supply the camps with beef. There'll be no questions asked about where it comes from, and you'll get top prices. Now and then, there'll be a mix-up on the count. You might get paid double or triple. Uh By the time the railroad's finished, you'll be a rich man. Sounds good, but I can't wait all that time to cash in. I got expenses. How much will you need? Five hundred to get started. I got it right here. What? I'll count it out. Where'd you get $500? You told me once it wasn't healthy to ask questions out in this country. There's your expense money. Get your boys started tomorrow night. It was late the following night that young Jim Wilson left the railroad camp and headed in the direction of Carlton. Three miles to the east, the gleaming double line of rails was broken, and the young engineer reined up. Oh, oh there, boy. Oh. Well, they 
torn up the tracks. This is Paul's work. He got the freighters to do it. <coughs> Steady there, boy. The tire's still in place. It won't take long to get the rails back. But they'll arrest Paul sure as shooting unless... Why not? I could do it before morning. All I need is some spikes and a sledgehammer. I can get them without being seen. Oh, Paul's just mad. He don't mean no harm. Get up there! Tonto had spent the day in town watching Dan while the Lone Ranger stayed close to the camp, keeping an eye on Warner. At midnight, they met outside Carlton and rode along the trail that paralleled the tracks. It's time for trouble if there's going to be any. Not right. There's been no sign of outlaws all the way from Carlton. And we can't be more than three miles from the camp. Uh, You're sure that Dan was still in the cafe when we left town? Him still there. All day, men come talk to him. Him stay in cafe. Outlaws. Them look plenty bad. And Dan's our leader. There's no doubt of that. Maybe Tonto make a mistake, not follow him. No, Tonto. There was no way you could tell which of the men were important and which weren't. We know Dan is. You listen, Kimasali. I hear it. Men work this late? It can't be any of the regular crew. They were all in camp when I left. Noise come from round Ben. It's only one man. Sounds like someone driving spikes. Ah. Uh, now we see him. Oh, they ripped up a stretch of track. Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. And hear us. Him get on horse right away. No, there's a rifle in the boot of his saddle. He's going for it. Reach for the sky. Not me. I'll come closer next time. Go in, I'll reach him. He was happy. It's Jim Wilson. Yeah, and if Paul hired you to do this job, you can tell him that... Hey... That horse. I thought you'd recognize Silver, even if you had forgotten me. Oh, how can I forget you, masked man? It's just the moonlight. What are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same question, but I don't have to now. You found these tracks torn up. You thought your father was responsible for it, and you're trying to repair the damage. Well, how do you know that? Uh, about Paul, I mean. Uh, Tonto, here fight him have with Kearney. Tell masked friend. Were you there yesterday afternoon? Huh? Do you blame me for what I'm doing, mister? I don't want to see Paul go to jail. I can't be sure, Jim, but I don't believe your father had anything to do with this. He said he wouldn't stop at nothing. And we both know that when your father loses his temper, he says a lot more than he means. Well, that's what I was hoping. I just took a ride tonight to make sure nothing was wrong, and then I found this. Who else could have done it? Do you trust Warner? Warner? Well, he's my boss. He's next to Kearney. He's made some kind of deal with an outlaw named Dan. We think he's taking advantage of what your father said to slow up the crew. But what for? The railroad comes first with men like you and Kearney. But that isn't true of Warner. What would he gain from it? Kearney might be removed if the work slowed up. Warner would get his job. He'd lose the one he has if he was ever found out. There's no chance of that if your father's blamed. Well, do you have any proof? Not yet. But we hope to before the night's over. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't want Potter to get into trouble when I thought he was guilty. Why, if he's innocent, the I... The best thing for you is to ride back to camp and tell Kearney what you found here. He'll ride off the men. They'll be needed, Jim. This damage doesn't amount to much. But if we're dealing with outlaws, it's only a beginning. I can't accuse Warner without any proof. You don't have to accuse anyone. Defend your father if you have to. And that's all. Jim, it's happy. That was a rifle shot. Get mounted, Jim. Right. Shot come from rise to north. Can you see anyone? There are woods. Men hide in trees. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. They're between us and the camp. They'll pour lead into us if we ride past those woods. We'll put the grating between us. Up and over the tracks. Get him up, Scout. That's it, Silver. Now up. Keep low, Jim. Yeah, you coming to see Kenny with me? He'd ask too many questions. We'll ride with you as far as the camp. If we get that far, you look. Men come out of trees. They're trying to cut us off. We open fire. A few shots might slow them up. Them still come. They must be outlaws, none of Paul's friends are killers. Can you hold this pace, Jim? I don't know. This coyote's never traveled so fast before. Hold him, Scout Tunnel. Uh, don't bother about me. We're staying with you, Jim. It's a downgrade after this rise. We get to the top, we... Them plenty close now. They can't shoot straight riding at that speed. Come on, boy. You're traveling in fast company. Here's the top of the rise. Down the hill to the camp. Right, Jim. Get up there. Are you silver? Away! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and young Jim Wilson drew away from the outlaws as they raced down the long slope. And by the time camp was sighted, the gang had given up the pursuit. The masked man and Tonto reined in at the edge of camp, but Jim rode on to the car that served Kearney both as an office and living quarters. The chief engineer was standing on the rear platform. Who's that? Jim Wilson. Uh, what's up? I thought I heard shooting. You sure did. There's a gang of outlaws to the east. They tore up some of the track. Outlaws? You mean freighters, don't you? No, sir. They were shooting at me and all the freighters around here, my friends. What's the matter, Chief? Jim says outlaws. I think it's freighters. They've been tearing up the tracks. Well, let's get after them. Mr. Kearney, I'm sure that it could be... They were your friends before you started working for the railroad. Your father's behind this, Jim. No, sir. Maybe we don't agree, but he's still my paw. He wouldn't try to kill me. Could you see any of the men's faces? I wasn't close enough for that. And they weren't close enough to see you. That settles it. How many horses are there in the corral, Warner? About 20. Pick out 20 men who know how to ride. Arm them and send them over here. That way. Uh, wait, I'll get the men out myself. You get a horse saddle and head for the sheriff's office. Do you mind if I say something? What? I'll go for the sheriff, all right, but there's no sense in bringing him out here. And Jeff Wilson's spread is just a little outside of Carlton. Can't we meet you and the men there? Jeff won't be home. That's where I think you're wrong. Jim got away from them. They know he'll warn the camp, so they won't try anything more tonight. We'll find Jeff at home, and I'll bet my bottom dollar he swears he hasn't left it tonight. I'll swear to the same thing. I like to hear you stick up for him, Jim, but it ain't common sense. Now, go ahead, Warner. Bring the sheriff to the Wilson spread. We'll meet you there. The sheriff, anyway. If I have to get a fresh horse in Carlton, I'll send him on ahead. See you later. Chief. I understand how you feel about this. You don't want your father arrested. Well, you don't have to be in on it. I'm leaving you in charge of the camp till we get back. Those outlaws are still at large. You're making an awful mistake. If I am, I'll take the responsibility for it. You have your orders. But, Mr. Kenny... Roll out of your blankets, men. Roll out. Want to put the idea in his head, mass man. He'd take all of our horses and most of our rifles. The camp will be unguarded. We saw Warner heading for Carlton. He's going after the sheriff. They're going to meet Kenny at Paw Spread. And arrest him. Sure. Mass man, you've convinced me that Paw didn't have anything to do with the raid. Maybe you can convince Kenny. Will you talk to him anyway? There may be a better way. What do you mean? You follow your orders and stay here. Toto. Uh huh. We're riding for Jeff's place. Have you got a plan? Get your men ready for an attack. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Jeff, not here? If he isn't, then we're the ones who have made the mistake. Uh, who's there? Open up, Jeff. Uh, what's the idea of routing a man out of bed? Say, let me get a look at you. Do you remember me, Jeff? The Lone Ranger. Uh huh. We ride plenty fast to warn you. Warn me about what? A gang of outlaws tore up some of the tracks east of camp. Well, uh, that's good news. More power to him. Kearney and his men are on the way here, Jeff. Warner's getting the sheriff. Did you say on the way here? I did. Kearney thinks you're the one who led the gang. He believes that you and your friends tore up the tracks. And he may be able to persuade the sheriff he's right. And you'll be arrested. Just let him try it. He lay a hand on me and I'll fill him full of lead. You're one man against twenty. You'll fight with me, won't you? No, Jeff. Why, well, I thought you was my friend. Do I have your word that you had nothing to do with the tracks being torn up? Nothing. Not that it ain't a good idea. You'll change your mind about that after I've had a talk with you. Oh, no. Take more than talk to change my mind about anything. Especially about that railroad. You ought to know me better than that, masked man. I got a reputation for being ornery, and I'm proud of it. I still think your son's life means more to you than your reputation. Eh? You're getting a horse saddle, the best one you have. You asking me to run away? When that posse arrives, we've got to be ready for them. I can fight them all from the house. There'll be no fighting until it means something. We're leading that posse back to the railroad camp. Come on. Tried you here, Dan. You never take any chances, do you? I give the orders. My boys do the rest. How they making out? They've torn up some track. The side of camp. Yes. Now they'll circle it and start burning the ties beyond the rails. Afterwards, they'll shoot up the camp a little and call it a night. You're riding out there with me. What for? Kearney's made a mistake. He and all the men he could mount are heading for Jeff's place. I just sent the sheriff there to join them. Well, you wanted the old man to be blamed, didn't you? Your boys can forget about the ties, Dan. I want them to attack the camp out Kearney's away. Yeah? Don't you see what a spot that would put him in? He deserted the camp, let some of his men get killed while he was persecuting an innocent old man. By tomorrow, Kearney's reputation will be so black that he won't be able to hold his job another week. Sounds good. It is good. How many men do you want killed? One will be plenty. 
Kearney left young Jim Wilson in charge. That's it. The old man's arrested and the son's left behind to die. We'll have to move fast. I'm with you. I don't like to stay here, hiding in the woods, when my son's in danger. It'll take more than the three of us to round up the outlaws. What's Tarno got his ear to the ground for? He's listening for the posse. You hear anything, Kimosabe? Ah. Uh. Many horse come this way. Then we can get started. Not yet, Jeff. We want the sheriff as well as the posse. We'll have to wait for him. I don't like it. Don't worry too much. I think I've judged the time pretty well. You see, it's Warner that gives the orders to Dan. And then Dan will have to relay them to his men. They're posse now. Let's show ourselves. Not until the sheriff arrives. It's all right now. You see the sheriff? Let him ride to Kearney. What do I do now? Just ride out there and yell at him? That's all, Jeff. Here goes. As soon as they see you, wheel your horse and follow me. Here. Listen, you coyotes. If you want me, you'll have to catch me. Come on, Silver. Well, they are. Get, Get them up, Scout. I own Silver. Away. They reached the grading, Sheriff. Now they're turning west. Won't that take them into your camp? Unless they turn aside. That's a masked man and an engine with him. I've been worried about that ever since we started after him. It proves he's in with the outlaws. Maybe. But you don't have to worry. You got plenty of men behind you. You don't savvy. If that masked man's a lone ranger and he's helping Jeff, then we're the ones who ought to be chased. Get up there. Oh, oh boy. What's your idea of stopping, masked man? Hunter wants to look at the trail. Ah. Well, Kimosabe? Two men right this way not long ago. Two men? They're catching up with us. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. They must have been Warner and Dan. You stay with Jeff, Tonto. I'm riding on ahead. Ah, we lead posse to camp. Huh? That's the idea. Now make sure that Dan and Warner don't escape. Faster, boy. Faster, Silver. <laughs> Quiet, boys, quiet. Time to start. Make a big circle around the cars first. Keep closing in. When you get about 100 feet from the camp, the six of you picked out, follow well. You all know Jim Wilson. Get him. All right, any questions? No. Then go to it. You see for me to see him? Me neither. Not if I'm going to be the commissary chief of your railroad. All right, come on. No, we'll wait until the boys close in. Make sure they follow orders. Who's that? Someone coming. Could it be any of your men? I thought he said silver. I knew he did. What of it? Look, that white horse. Mister, we're in trouble. That's a lone ranger. Who's he? Bad medicine for you and me. If I'd have known he was anywhere around here, I wouldn't have touched you, Joe. Let's get out of here. We can't get away from that horse of his. We got to fight. Throw over behind these rocks. Can't stay here. He's coming too close. Uh, the best shot in the West. Could get hit? No. I kicked up the dust just beside me. Why can't we join your men? We'll be safe with them. Yeah, and get caught with them, too. What are you talking about? They're circling the camp now. Another five minutes and Jim will be done for. And we can make our getaway with 20 or 30 men to guard us. Sometimes that ain't enough for the lone ranger. I'm getting out of here. Get up there, boy. Get up there. There, lone ranger. Posse's closing in on us. Not good. Big fight at camp. We get here just in time. Those outlaws will kill my son. I'm not waiting for the sheriff or nobody. You do what Lone Ranger say. Aye, aye, Kimosabe. Tell them one over the rest of the outlaws, Tonto. We can capture them all. Well, here comes the posse. Hey, men not shoot. The sheriff has brains, Tonto. He can see what's happening at the camp. Wait up, sheriff. Oh, 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 oh. It is. It's the Lone Ranger. Boys, from now on, whatever he says, go. Then follow me. We'll throw a big circle around the outlaws and round up the whole gang. Come on, Silver! Then... Kearney and his men have come back here, and the Lone Ranger's with them. This was your idea, joining them in. We rode straight into a trap. we got to break through them. we got to make a getaway. Throw down your guns. You're surrounded. Come on, Dad. I want to live, mister. 
Jail or no jail, it's better than stopping the lads. But by job, if they find me with you, I go to jail too. We gotta get through. Yeah, you gotta, you mean. One more chance, then. I'm taking it, masked man. You win. Read up, boys, and throw down your gun. <laughs> You hurt, Jim. Oh, no, boy. It's just a scratch. Oh, my boy. I'm sorry you got such a stubborn old man. You got nothing to apologize for, Jeff. Yes, I have, Kearney. I'm the one who made the mistake. I give you plenty of reason for it. Oh, that sounds like you changed your mind about the railroad. Just what I've done, Jim. But why? I mean, how? Well, you can thank the mask man. Just like we can thank him for everything else tonight. Remember what I said yesterday? About not minding if you were severe like George Washington? Yeah. I made the same remark to the Lone Ranger. He sure had an answer for it. What? Well, something like this. My freighting business means a lot to me, sure. But the railroad means a lot to the whole country. And if George Washington was alive today and was your age, Jim, well, he'd be doing just the same kind of work you're doing. He was an American. That came first with him. I'd hate to think that wasn't true of me, too. You're doing right, son, and I'm proud of you. Well, thanks, Paul. That, that makes me feel fine. Makes me feel some better myself. I uh, got a word for you, too, Kearney. Yeah? Warner and Dan and all those gunmen are on their way to jail. But next time when there's trouble, you better call on the mask man. I sure will, if he's anywhere around. He will be. You're working for your country, mister. You don't have to be a soldier to do that. And the Lone Rangers in back of you from here on in. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.